several of my friends have reached out to me and said, hey, you work with electronics pretty often. I know that you've done some manufacturing. Uh, what exactly happened here? Like, do I need to be worried about my cell phone or my toaster or my laptop or what really is going on? Uh, so today I'm going to take some questions in regards to the ongoing situation with pagers, walkie talkies, and other devices, all specifically within the country of Lebanon. So uh, yeah, pretty crazy developing story. I'm going to go ahead and put this on the screen just because uh, it was the thing that I was tagged in most often. And also, I wanted to shout out uh, anybody who wants to kind of share a story with me or get something to talk about on the stream. Uh, you can do that on my Mastodon account. So I left Twitter a while ago just because, um, you know, like things were, were I, I think it was, de oh yeah, December 2022. Uh, if you want to tag me in a story, you can always go to infosec.exchange. Uh, I am right here. And this is how I originally found out about the story. I was tagged really early. And uh, yeah, so uh, thank you to uh, Tag Hunt for tagging me on the story. Uh, the second that I saw it, I knew that we were going to discuss it today. So yeah, if you've got a tip, if you've got something you want to talk about on the stream, probably the fastest way is tagging me there. But of course, I'm also going to go through our YouTube comments this week as well. So, oh, also good to see everybody on the stream. James, uh, SAQ, uh, a cat. Uh, we are early here, but already have some interesting stuff to cover. So, all right, again, let me pull up the story. So it appears that yesterday, um, a number of electronic devices exploded. So this was actually the one from today. We also have, where's the first story? Here we go. Um, a bunch of uh, pagers exploding yesterday. Here we go. Uh, all traced to a company called Apollo Gold. So a while ago, this military organization had decided that cell phones were too vulnerable to being tracked. So they wanted to switch over to something that was like receive only and kind of went backwards towards uh, electronics that haven't been used, at least for, <laughs> uh, for me anyway, uh, for a very long time. So I haven't seen a pager functional in a while, uh, except for on like maybe medical professionals or things like that. But uh, these pagers are still in use. And in particular, they allow you to just receive instead of be connected to a network and then constantly update your location. Maybe it makes you a little harder to track. I don't really totally understand the, the decision to, to go back to using pagers and why it offered so many specific benefits, but that was the decision. So there is a company uh, called Apollo Gold that makes these pagers that are very popular. They're rugged. They, they work well, uh, but they also license the ability to manufacture their product to other companies. So if you're a company that has X amount of money, you can set yourself up and make it so that you have all the necessary uh, files and everything to manufacture this product and sell it for yourself. If you wanted to make a small modification, like possibly modifying the battery or other elements of the circuit board or even the programming, then that might be in violation of your terms of license, but it would be completely uh, something that you could do. Because once you license a design like this, you're kind of setting yourself to be up to, uh, to be able to manufacture it yourself, provided you abide by the terms of that licensing. So what it looks like here is early speculation was like, oh, somebody snuck into this company's warehouse and switched everything. But it looks like the reality was much more of a supply chain attack. So this is, again, I am uh, a electronics person that manufactures uh, printed circuit boards and functional electronics with a team of people who are much more experienced than myself. Uh, fairly regularly. So when it comes to my experience with uh, electronic supply chains and licensing and that sort of thing, like I, I work around this enough to, to kind of see how clever this was when it comes to having access to a design, all the schematics, everything you would need, and then being able to manufacture it legally, uh, at least at, at first when, when it's not exploding, uh, in a way that is very, very difficult to trace. The electronic supply chain is very muddy. There's a lot of kind of the white label manufacturers well, where maybe they have a factory and they'll gain the rights to create a certain product, but they're not the original manufacturer. So that appears to be what happened here when it comes to the first wave of devices where originally people were suspicious maybe this company had been infiltrated, but it seems like they were merely licensing their products. So is it likely that your cell phone or toaster or whatever is going to explode? No because it looks like a highly sophisticated infiltration of a supply chain that allowed uh, the perpetrators here to be able to uh, put out a device that functions normally 
and then at a predetermined time received software instructions to uh, rapidly heat the battery and cause a second element to explode. Now, it uh, it's kind of difficult to say exactly what was done here. Like, was the material in the printed circuit board uh, perhaps like combined with something that was explosive? Like, was there an element added to the battery that uh, was explosive? Like, and maybe more efficient battery material was used in a in a smaller area. It's not really known here, but what is known is that this was not just a lithium battery overheating. I saw some people saying like, you know, any device could be uh, theoretically caused to do this. And that is absolutely not the case. So that's the number one thing I wanted to spell. I've seen a lot of uh, examples, uh, let's say, of lithium batteries overheating, exploding, um, shorting out, you name it. I've made a lot of mistakes in electronics. And for example, some of the batteries around like e-bikes or like scooters are huge. And if you make a mistake with them, um, a lot of energy will shoot out. It's very energy dense. It causes a fire, but they don't exactly explode. Um, a lot of energy is released very quickly. They burn very fast, but it's not a detonation. And what I saw in a lot of the videos here was definitely a detonation, uh, a material that was exploding so fast that it was causing damage through a blast wave and shrapnel. That is not something that just happens with a regular battery. So uh, unless your specific device was compromised at this source, it is not capable of uh, exploding the way that we've seen in some of these videos. So like some people who reached out to me in, uh, you know, my friends were uh, just curious, like, is it possible to hack a device so hard that it just explodes in this way? And while it is possible to cause a fire and it is possible to maybe like, you know, burn, like burn someone or uh, cause damage, it's certainly not possible to turn it into a device that throws that much shrapnel, at least the way that we're seeing in this case. So absolutely the wildest news I've seen probably in five years, I think, like of, of uh, just covering like security news and uh, just keeping an eye on this. Like this is a incredibly sophisticated supply chain attack that took advantage of licensing. It took advantage of software know-how. It took advantage of chemistry know-how. And it also took advantage of uh, electronics and manufacturing know-how. So being able to produce a commercial copy of something and add new technology to it, seal it, have it operate for six months, and then in a targeted fashion, have it uh, explode only in a single country. Um, I mean, it, and I don't think anyone's said this, but did nobody who owned one of these devices fly like in that period of time anywhere? Uh, or what sort of screening did this have to pass through in order for it to remain undetected for six months? Like you would think that international air travel like might have ruined that whole surprise. But anyway, like what I, I guess my, my number one reaction to all of this is how many other completely unrelated actors on like on other stages around the world were planning some sort of reveal that involved an exploding device whose millions of dollars of work is now ruined by this event. Because people are going to, of course, like, you know, I think most countries are going to be like, all right, wow, we really need, need to examine this and probably discover other potentially unrelated plots to insert similar things into supply chains as a result. So really stunning that this is going to make people re-examine supply chains in a, a crucial way and see it as an issue of national security. Never again, um, never again will uh, we be ignorant to the possibility that a well-infiltrated supply chain can have incredibly serious consequences. So like, you know, normally this would be like, oh no, somebody put a spy chip by, you know, creating commercial copies. This is not a spy chip. This is an explodey box uh, that was added instead. So um, truly a stunning attack. Uh, obviously, that's why I was tagged in it so often. Like, I, I appreciate the complexity of this. You have to have modifications to the original software, or at least something that's able to cause what seems like a thermal runaway with the battery that heats like a, a secondary or something that's uh, very sensitive to a particular temperature to then go off and trigger the rest of the explosive. Um, there's a lot of speculatory information out there. So, uh, just try to stick to the facts on this one. Um, but yeah, uh, some pretty crazy stuff coming out today and just wanted to calm anyone's fears who for one is maybe like pushing their electronics to the side, worrying if like any LiPo battery could do this. No, it does not look like that is the case. Um, this is truly like on the sucks net level of crazy, uh, targeted attacks when it comes to electronics, software infiltration hardware infiltration, you name it. Um, this is quite an interesting developing story. So I'm sure a lot of people in the electronic 
uh, electronics wor world are going to be talking about this. Uh, people in the hacker world are definitely talking about this. Uh, and it's a story you're probably going to see continuing to pop up as the story develops. Now, the fact that additional devices exploded today is something that I haven't even covered yet. So uh, today, I saw several videos uh, showing walkie-talkies also exploding. And it was mentioned that other, quote, other electronic devices were also uh, exploding. So these uh, seem to be a bit more deadly in terms of actually like causing casualties uh, from what was reported. But if you look at some of these photos, it very much, and from having owned radios like this, it very much looks like the battery unit is what exploded here. The battery unit clips onto the back of these sorts of radios. I used them when I was a security guard. Uh, and not this exact model, but other Motorola radios. And when the battery is clipped on the back here, there's a very large battery unit that is uh, attached right here um, that also communicates with the rest of the device through a little bus. So it is possible if the firmware was modified on these that a signal from uh, the radio could cause the battery to heat up and then possibly explode. So it's kind of seeing a pattern developing here. Uh, but we will have to see if there's any more information and details about this uh, later in the day. For now, that's really all the information we have. And again, it does seem like this is something that has to do with the electronic supply chain um, legally licensing some of these designs and then producing copies, um, which again, requires a stunning amount of technological know-how to make sure that you're creating functional devices that are getting no complaints that operate as intended, but also include new technology that's able to uh, you know, survive potentially getting left in a hot car, flying on an airplane or other sorts of things that would kind of like uncover uh, other attempts to do this sort of thing. So really gonna, gonna have to have a lot of these questions answered before we know all the information. But yes, thank you all for tagging me in this. Um, as an electronics person, I was talking with this with some of my, uh, talking with some of my colleagues about this last night, just about uh, how sophisticated that an attack this was and how uh, targeted at the same time it was. Some people were also calling this an incredibly uh, targeted uh, strike in that it only went after specific devices. So uh, that means that there was a signal or a message that caused an error. Uh, so I think it was CNN that was reporting that there was an error message that was transmitted to all the devices that uh, attempted to explode. Uh, so the fact that this was targeted against specific devices, uh, it wasn't like every device uh, that was sold all exploded at the same time, it was actually a message that was sent to the device that caused it to uh, go off. So yeah, a uh, lot to absorb today. Um, I've spent uh, several hours kind of trying to keep up with what's going on, looking at photos, uh, chatting with other people that are uh, kind of interested in it. And uh, yeah, it's been a lot.